Does the color of the Messiah's skin really matter? Absolutely. Some might say it doesn't. But what if I told you that understanding his true appearance is key to uncovering hidden truths about history, identity, and even modern faith? The Bible gives us clear descriptions. So why do we so often see a European image of the Savior? This is a truth you can't afford to ignore. People perish for lack of knowledge. The truth will set some of you free, but it may also unsettle others, provoking reactions that reveal just how deeply this topic challenges our faith and moral beliefs. I once followed the European image of Jesus before discovering the truth of who the Messiah truly is. Will you do the same when faced with the revelation that he may not look like the image you've always known? Remember, the Messiah, both divine and human, died as us, for us. He bore all our infirmities, sins, transgressions, and iniquities. He took on our mess and suffered to reconnect us with the Most High Yah. So will you follow him no matter what? Let's get into it. Since the early days of Christianity, the debate over the Messiah's appearance has sparked endless controversy. Did the Bible describe the Messiah's physical features? Yes. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. In Revelation 1, verses 14 through 15, we find a vivid description. His head and hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. But despite this, Western culture has consistently depicted the Messiah as a fair-skinned man with blonde hair and blue eyes. Why? What was the purpose of replacing the true image of our Savior with one that fits a European standard? I can see this has become a struggle between good and evil. Satan has a question. <laughs> This is more than a historical question. It's a matter of spiritual significance and identity. So let's start with his name. The name Jesus is rooted in Eurocentric Christianity, but his true name is Yahoshai, also rendered as Yahshua or Yahweh Shai. The letter J did not exist in Greek or Hebrew and the spelling Jesus only became common in English during the 16th century. The name Yao is connected to the Tetragrammaton, the four-letter Hebrew name for Yah, written as this in Yiddish and this in Paleo-Hebrew. In certain linguistic traditions, Yao is understood as an ancient or regional variation of God's name, specifically linked to the shortened form Yah, which appears in phrases like Hallelujah, meaning praise Yah. In Hebrew, Yah is a short form of Yahweh, signifying he who causes to exist, or simply referring to Adonai. The full form Yahweh is interpreted as, I am who I am, Exodus 3, 14, representing Yah's eternal and self-sufficient nature. Thus, Yah Oshai is directly tied to this divine name, 
carrying meanings connected to Yah's eternal nature, existence, and divine authority. Understanding that the true name of the Messiah derives from this ancient Hebrew root allows us to see the depth of his identity and the divine authority he carries. The change to Jesus over time reflects linguistic and cultural shifts, but the original name connects us to the true Hebrew heritage of the Messiah. So why did we end up with the name Jesus? And more importantly, why have we been led to believe the Messiah was European? Understanding his true name, Yahoshai, is the first step in reclaiming the truth of who Yahshua really is. It's about more than just history. It's about recognizing the demonic deception and worldly systems that have sought to obscure this truth for centuries. Just because it makes you feel uncomfortable doesn't mean it has to change. You know, I mean, Jesus was a white man too. Now, let's take a closer look at the Bible. The description in Revelation is striking. Hair like wool, feet like burnt grass. These aren't the traits of a European man. We were discussing the disciples. What color were they? Well, I don't think we know that for certain. But they were Hebrews, were they not? That's right. As was Jesus. Jesus was also a Hebrew. Could it be that Yahoshai was a man of color and that his true appearance has been deliberately obscured? Absolutely. But this isn't just about skin color. It's about understanding the true lineage of the Messiah, the tribe of Judah, and the children of Israel as a whole. This revelation challenges us to rethink how we see Yahoshai, but it doesn't stop there. It forces us to reconsider the identity of key biblical figures like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Noah, Moses, and even Adam and Eve. What color were the original Hebrews? I have told you that we don't know that for certain. Then you can't believe for certain that Jesus was white. Just uh, just a moment, just a moment. God is white. Isn't it obvious? Well, that is obvious, but we don't know if it's obvious that God is white. Now, let's dive into Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Yah created man in his own image. In the image of Yah created he him. Male and female created he them. Then in chapter 2, verse 7, we read, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Let's check out the Strong's Concordance to see what dust really means. According to Strong's, Dust translates to ashes, debris, dirt, dry soil. Now, here's a fun question. What color is dirt? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Could it mean that if Adam and Eve were black and Adam was formed from the dust of the ground, then when Genesis says, let us make man in our image, it implies that both the Most High and Yahoshai have a darker complexion. Think about that. Aha! <laughs> Aha! In biblical times, people were identified by nation and lineage, not race. The concept of race as we know it today didn't matter because most of the people were darker in complexion. 
Moses, a Levite, was mistaken for an Egyptian. And Paul, Shaul, from the tribe of Benjamin, was also mistaken for an Egyptian. The ancient Egyptians were black, and so were the Hebrews. The truth about Yahushua's appearance isn't just a minor detail. It's a key that unlocks deeper questions about our identity and the spiritual journey we're all on. The truth about Yahushua's appearance isn't just a minor detail. It's a key that unlocks deeper questions about our identity and the spiritual journey we're all on. Consider why the Most High might have sent Yahushai with dark skin. Could it be that Yao knew that Satan would use racial differences to sow division among people, leading to harmful acts, conflicts, and sin? The Messiah's appearance is deeply connected to his lineage and the tribe of Judah, which in turn ties into the broader narrative of identity and truth. Let's take a moment to reflect on these images of Yahushai. Feet like fine brass, as if they had been in a furnace. Do they look Middle Eastern or European? This contrast challenges the widely accepted depictions that have shaped our understanding for centuries. The implications of this are profound, reaching far beyond mere physical appearance and into the heart of spiritual truth. This isn't the only confusion within Christianity. The Bible, a complex and intricate text, has been interpreted in countless ways, leading to a maze of beliefs, practices, and conflicts. Why are there so many divisions? It's as if each denomination is an isolated island with its own mission statement, where some members rely more on their church leaders than on the Most High. Many focus more on pleasing their pastors than deepening their relationship with Father Yao. Their church attendance is impeccable, but it often overshadows their commitment to fasting, worship, and prayer. We witness pastors manipulating their congregation into buying them expensive jewelry and fueling their jets rather than teaching the true biblical principles of the ecclesia. Take, for instance, the term Nicolaitans mentioned in Revelation, derived from the Greek Nikau to conquer and Laos people. It literally means conquerors of the people. This term represents those who exert control over others, steering them away from true biblical beliefs and practices. Could this kind of spiritual and moral domination be why so many Christians today have conflicting understandings of fundamental truths, including the very image of our Savior? Revelation 2 verses 4 through 7 warns us, but I have this charge against you, that you have left your first love. You have lost the depth of love that you first had for me. So remember the heights from which you have fallen and repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your sinful behavior. Seek Yah's will and do the works you did at first when you first knew me. Otherwise, I will visit you and remove your lampstand, the church, its impact from its place, unless you repent. Yet you have this to your credit, that you hate the works and corrupt teachings of the Nicolaitans that mislead and delude the people, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear and heed what the Spirit says to the churches. 
to him who overcomes the world through believing that Yahoshai is the son of Yao, I will grant the privilege to eat the fruit from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of Yao. It's time to return to Yao's ecclesia, his called out assembly, and leave behind the institutional church filled with confusion, false doctrine, worldly mission statements, and manipulation. We must repent and turn back to the Most High. Now, consider this. Throughout history, people of African descent have worn hairstyles like dreadlocks and cornrows, styles described in the Bible as locks or bushy. For instance, Samson is described as having seven locks of hair, Judges 16 and 13, and King Solomon's locks are described as bushy and black as raven. Song of Songs 5 verse 11. These aren't just cultural symbols. They connect directly to physical descriptions in ancient texts. Number six, verse five, even talks about letting the locks of hair grow as a part of a Nazarite vow. And what about the Assyrians who captured the Israelites? Second Kings chapter 17, verse six, depicted them with distinct melanated features. These images challenge the conventional portrayals we've been shown and align more closely with the features of people of black descent. As we revisit the Bible, it's clear that the descriptions of Yahoshai and others are not what we've been led to believe. The implications are profound. If the Messiah was sent with dark skin, it speaks to a deeper truth, one that challenges centuries of racial division, historical inaccuracies, and theological misconceptions. Understanding his true appearance isn't just about setting the record straight. It's about reclaiming the truth and protecting ourselves from the deceptions that continue to mislead millions. I know some of you might still be thinking, why does it matter? But it does, more than many are willing to admit. Could it be that the reason some say it doesn't matter is because they can't handle the truth? The truth about Yahoshai's appearance is not just a trivial detail. It's a key that unlocks deeper questions about history, identity, and faith. It forces us to confront uncomfortable realities about how the true people of Yasharal, the chosen people, have been treated for centuries. I think back on the African, Af African American people in America. I think how that they were taken against their wills, put in the belly of ships, brought over here, beat, cussed. Many of them died in the guts of those ships, thrown overboard. They were pulled from families over there. And those nations that mistreated Yah's people, scattered to the four corners of the earth, will be judged. Joel 3 verse 2 declares, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will enter into judgment with them on behalf of my people and my inheritance Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and they have divided up my land. It is easier for some to dismiss this truth because it challenges the narratives they've been taught, or perhaps because it exposes underlying racism and prejudice that have shaped these narratives. Consider this, if Yahoshai's true appearance has been deliberately obscured, what does that say about the motives behind such a deception? Is it rooted in embarrassment over the false portrayal that has been propagated for so long? Or is it a more sinister attempt 
to erase and diminish the significance of the people from whom he came. Does acknowledging his true identity somehow lessen the importance of the one who has been in disguise for centuries? Absolutely not. In fact, it brings us closer to the truth that the Most High intended for us to know. The truth about Yahushua's appearance is deeply linked to his lineage, his mission, and the warnings he gave us about those who would mislead the faithful. Revelation 2.9 and 3.9 warn of those who claim to be Jews, but are not, who belong to the synagogue of Satan. These warnings are not just historical footnotes. They are prophetic insights that help us navigate through a world where false teachings have long been accepted as truth. So, does it matter? Yes, the truth matters because it sets us free. John 8 verse 32. It matters because it forces us to reckon with the past, challenge the present, and redefine the future. To the true chosen people of the Most High, the first step is knowing who you are. But the next step, the most important step, is to walk in the ways of Yao and become the royal priesthood you are called to be. It's time to turn back to Yao, to allow him to transform you, to create in you a clean heart. Surrender your will to his. Be obedient to his commandments and live out the divine purpose he has placed within you. Let his will be done in your life and experience the power and peace that come from walking in the truth and light of the Most High. The time is now. Rise up, reclaim your identity, and let Yao guide your every step. As we close, remember this. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The journey to uncovering the real Messiah isn't just about history, it's about reclaiming your faith and your identity. If you're ready to dig deeper, join our community, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss our next video about tribulation. Let's continue this journey together because truth matters. Peace and blessings to you all.